operating on furry time. Yeah. We're behind by at least 15 minutes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, Honestly, 10 minutes over, I'm still counting that a win. That's a win, yeah. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to start. Uh, this is Um Actually, the unofficial furry edition. So Um Actually is I have prepared a list of statements. These are incorrect statements about various furry properties that you know and love or if not use somebody else. Now, what your role as contestants is, is to correct the statements. So there's really only two rules. Uh, the first rule is you must proceed all your corrections with um actually. If you don't say um actually, you won't get the point. And the other rule is just like correcting somebody in real life, you can interrupt me at any time. So uh, with that in mind, Oh, also, a word of advice for those people who haven't seen the show. Um, it's worth buzzing in a lot to just kind of guess at what might be wrong. So, you know, if you don't know, maybe you can just be fast and guess. Yeah. <laughs> There's no right. penalty for wrong answers. This so is just true. Let your freak flag fly. Yeah. All right. Uh, I do want to say two things. One, I had a lot of help making this slide deck. Um, by, I believe it's Antler Bun on Twitter. They are a graphic designer. They do really good work. And two, this is in no way affiliated with college humor. <laughs> I did not, like, we, this, this doesn't make any money. Yeah. This is, I'm making it clear, this is not affiliated with college humor. Yeah, they'd probably say no, so we didn't yeah. ask them. That's probably a good enough coverage, right? Yeah. Sounds a lot like Pat Castle's, yeah. if All I'm right. honest. <laughs> With all that out of the way, let's get started. In the video game and board game Armello, heroes of the great clans vie for the throne of a king who has gone mad from an affliction known as rot. The game can end in two ways. The king dies, either naturally or by player intervention, or the king is banished by a player who has collected four spirit stones. Kem. Um, actually, there's only three spirit stones. Uh, no, you do need to get all four spirit stones to banish them. Uh, Bo. Um, actually, the game can also end if you lose. Uh, no, <laughs> this is a multiplayer game. <laughs> so it actually ends when a person wins. Ah. <laughs> Gavin. Um, actually, one of the other win conditions is that if you have enough rot and you have more rot, you can actually win by having the most amount of rot. Which I know that sounds really confusing. That, that's almost correct. <laughs> Don't give him the point. You also have to defeat the king with more rot, which does not contradict anything I said. Damn it. That All could right. be the new name of the game. Y'all can keep correct. guessing if you want. <laughs> All right, Kem. Um, actually, the game is not Armello. It's Monopoly. Uh, no, that's an there is no king in Monopoly. <laughs> There's only billionaires. Never heard of this. Come on, man. All right, Bo. Um, actually, you can also get a diplomacy victory. Uh, yes, <laughs> but you still, the game still ends when the king dies, either ah, naturally or through assassination player intervention. Assassination counts as diplomacy. Gotcha. <laughs> oh, man, I don't know. All right, <laughs> should, should we call this question? Anyone want to take another stab? I think you got to call it, man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Armel is not a board game. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, you play it like oh, one. Yeah, come on. Like, the video game is set up to be styled like a board game. <laughs> yeah. It's not a board game. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. We're this is how the game is going, night. huh? Yeah, yeah. This is going to be like, oh, Hearthstone's not a card game. It's a simulation of a card game. Don't so worry. This question's going to be a game. lot easier. It's about cats. Yeah, yeah. Oh, great. Oh. The songs in the Broadway show Cats are all based on poetry in T.S. Eliot's Old Possum's Book of Practical Cats. Songs like Memory or The Rum Tum Tugger are practically identical to the poems with a few minor tweaks to fit the song's meter or the cat's perspective. While others, like Mr. Mistopheles or The Old Gumby Cat, take a few more liberties by comparison. Big musical fans. Kem. Um, actually, it's uh, Mrs. Mistopheles. Uh, no, it's Mr. Mistopheles. It's like one of the main songs. Come on. Who, who watched this movie? <laughs> Nobody. It's a Nobody. musical first. Who watches musicals anymore? It's 2022. <laughs> if it's not on Twitch, I don't want it. <laughs> I just look at this movie and I'm just afraid that it exists. I mean, also, correct. <laughs> that was the last movie I saw before the pandemic. 
I'm, I'm very sorry for sorry your loss. for you. <laughs> Holy God. What a way to go out. <laughs> All right. It's awful. It's a fate worse than death, honestly. Uh, anyone want to take another stab at this? You know the, the, the point oh, of this actually... game is for us to get points? <laughs> <laughs> well, see, the point of this game is for you to know things. Ah. Okay, listen, right. listen. <laughs> Bo, what do you want to uh, go um, with? Actually, the Broadway show has nothing in common with the poem at all. Uh, no. Damn. Well, <laughs> okay. <laughs> You've kind of stumbled on the thing that is wrong. Yes, here. that's what I was going for. So, I'll give you the point unless anybody else can be more specific than you. Don't or like lock. you also get a first chance you also get the first chance to try and be more specific so do you oh, want to do that um let's say there was some other like interstitial work in between the poem and the broadway show and like they were based on each other in a chain uh, that's close <laughs> enough yes all right close so, enough. um well they're all based on the t.s Eliot poems not all of them are from the Book of Practical Cats. Mm. Uh, in particular, the one I said, Memory, like the song in Cats, actually loosely based on a poem, Rhapsody on a Windy Night, uh, which I believe was from, and some of the other Cats songs in it were based on either unpublished works or uh, a passage in the dry salvages. All right. Do we have a scoreboard, or is this like... Oh, yeah. Just... It doesn't matter. None of us are getting these points. <laughs> yeah. Really... No, it's not happening. No, we have one person on the board on a very high-tech oh. scoreboard. Oh, my God. Look at that. It's just... so fancy. Oh, round of applause. Round of yeah, applause. Yeah, round of applause. These are now scoreboard. tally marks, because this I didn't think This is going to be the only point we're ever getting yeah, in this yeah. game. <laughs> All right. You just have to feel how right you are. Yeah, there yeah. you go. Okay. It can't be measured. Next question. This is about Iron Claw. Ironclaw, an anthro tabletop RPG by Sanguine Games, takes place in the late medieval fantasy land of Calabria. And what would a medieval fantasy setting be without some nobles feuding at each other? Border clashes between the passionate boars of House Dolero and the chivalrous horses of House of Wadapois are simple enough hook for any adventure. By the way, pronunciation is not a correction. Uh -huh. <laughs> or maybe you'd like to explore the complex relations stemming from the split of House Phelan into House Bisclavre. Bo. Um, actually, one of these is from Game of Thrones. Uh, no, these are all from Iron Claw. <laughs> Ken. Um, actually, pronunciation is a correct. <laughs> <laughs> it's pronounced Iron Clay. <laughs> no. It's Sanguine Game. Uh, Gavin. Oh, uh, actually, what if this is not a tabletop game, like <laughs> actual tabletop? What if it's an Arnold situation, and this is another one of those where it's actually a video game? You know okay. what? I swear. I, I get where you're coming from. <laughs> it is a tabletop RPG, though. <sighs> well, it was worth the shot. Yeah. All right, anyone want to take another stab? You can do broad guesses if you want to try. Yeah, I'd like to take another stab into my... Chaz, this is ridiculous. All right, Bo. Um, actually, the horses of Arbois du Bois are like total jerks. They are not chivalrous at all. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're kind of both. Ah. It's, it's that one, like, they're very themed around, like, crusaders. Sounds so like I'm on my way to another that's right enough. <laughs> <laughs> they, you can't just argue with <laughs> for a point. I mean, oh, actually, isn't that the point? Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> All right, I want to hear what Kem has to say first. Um, actually, the boars of House Dolero are not passionate at all. They are totally disinterested in this feud. <laughs> oh, no, once, once they get, like, riled up, they're, like, the, like, they're the well-known really apathetic okay, so, boars. <laughs> so the thing is, passionate also, like, that's a circle, and then inside is another circle that's stubborn. Mm. So, you know. Mm. Sometimes it's that. Uh. Oh, actually, maybe they're not boars at all. Maybe they're some other animal. You didn't buzz in. Oh! <laughs> Get it? Um, actually, they're not boars. <laughs> no, they are boars. <laughs> ah, damn it! <laughs> all right, didn't buzz in. Shot, and man. also, you were wrong. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Two problems. 
All right. Killing us, man. Should we call this one? Yeah. I love that the most popular answer is like attacking the like integrity of the game. This is like <laughs> the premise of what we're doing. Right. Well, it is an unofficial furry version, <laughs> yeah, so yeah. it can't be that great. Uh, Phelan, not a noble house. They are actually a tribe more of like naturalists and druids. Hmm. All right. But that is going to bring us to our first they're shiny question. They're not house because they're homeless. It's a Ooh. So, distinction. shiny questions, just like shiny Pokemon, a little bit different, a little bit rarer, worth the same number of points. Mm -hmm. So if you, can, if you could please reach under your chair. Oh, dear. Oh. And pull out a and brand new car. Two pages. Oh. It has a bunch of ofs on it. So this is called a title of words. Now I remember why I got those markers out earlier. You will need them. Oh. I'm not gonna throw these. Oh. I'm bad at throwing. Oh. Okay. So, you know how books have a lot of titles like a game of thrones, a blank of blank. Mm -hmm. So what I've done is I found six books as listed under the furry section of Goodreads, that all fit this title. Oh dear. And then took <laughs> all of the parts and jumbled them up. Your job is to put them back together, or if not that, at least make up some interesting titles. Okay. <laughs> okay. And now the house jazz would be good. Should have given us clipboards. This is. Yeah. This was the backup solution. <laughs> uh, there, you can nice. grab the... Furthermore, ladies and gentlemen, furthermore. Mm -hmm. You can grab the whiteboards to your, uh, to your right, I think, if you need something to write on. It's not really a whiteboard. It's like a yeah. fridge magnet. So, again. We had to make do. Yeah, the second page is all of the words. The fact that we have buzzers is a miracle. <laughs> yeah, honestly, like, yeah. Yeah. If we have background music, now would be a great time to play it. Do <clears throat> Oh, there's the background. There we go. <laughs> Deploy. If you want a hint for this, jet. one of the books is actually by the Guest of Honor. Hmm. This is I was, I was worried that like I would use up all the good words. Well, the show has the magic of editing. Yeah. yeah. And like, and the last two ones would just be like random jumbles, but these all kind of sound like titles. Have fun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is now a visual acuity test for you, audience. It members. should be showing on those screens. Is it not showing on those yeah. screens? If you, if you can read the bottom row, you have 2020 vision. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah thank you. Ah. Um, actually, the real show has much better production values. <laughs> it does. They have um, a budget. Um, actually, College Humor is a multi-million dollar production company. Mm -hmm. I mean, not anymore. Didn't they, they die or something? Well, you know, ever since Pat died. Oh, okay, fair. Yeah. College kids don't have that kind of money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right, how are we doing? We all done? Uh, I got one more. Okay. 
If you only have one more, there should be only two words left. Yeah, I know. You just have to decide I, what order to put them in. I don't realize. I just, I kind of just wrote <laughs> stuff. You just got to strike them off. I, I, I didn't realize that's what this was for. <laughs> I mean, There's so, so many like, words here. Yes, and, and I'm just like. The like, ballot was confusing. <laughs> the moment I stepped out of high school, my reading level dropped to first yeah, grade. Yeah. I cannot handle this. <laughs> I don't even know it. I know one of these, and I don't know the other one. Oh, no. Oh, wait. Do your best. Okay. All right. All right. We'll go ahead and start reading the questions, or start reading the answers. So, let's start with Kem. Kem, what you got? All right, so, I got the prince of the night. Mm. That sounds, mm -hmm. you know, mysterious or whatnot. I've got the fellowship of ringtails, because that seems like it's just, it's gotta, it's gotta be it, right? Uh, a whisper of knaves. Mm-hmm. Wings of God. There's got to be some biblical themes in there somewhere. Right. Uh, clay of the forest, because that's where you find clay, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and the golden dancer of Sears. It's my favorite now defunct department store. <laughs> that's scars. That's supposed to be scars. Right? <laughs> oh! <laughs> <laughs> Terrible handwriting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Again. This was the backup option. No, it's Sears now. It's yeah, canon. Yeah. It's Coming, canon. You know Coming what? this fall, God of Sears. <laughs> Equally is wrong. All right. Let's go to Gavin. Gavin, okay, what you got? so I, I got the Prince of Scars. Like, I don't know. He sounds like this guy. He's been through some. He's been through a lot, man. Uh, he's a prince. He probably got into fights. I don't know. How the stuff with the wings sounds like some book about some bird furries. I don't know. I don't know why they're together. They're like, a, you know, like you know, a bunch of crows come together and makes like a murder. There you go. That's my kind of thinking. Walk, am I right? Yeah. So then I have the golden dancer of the night because it sounds very majestic. I don't know <laughs> where else that would go. The forest of ringtails, it seems like, I don't know. They're just a bunch of what? Raccoons and they're in the forest. A whisper of God, there's my biblical reverence because I just right. like, mm -hmm. I figured if something's going to be whispering here, it's probably God for some reason. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. And then my last one is just because I don't know what to do with names and clay, so I just did names of clay. Mm -hmm. So there's no reason. I just ran out of words. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we have a lot of the same answers. And Bo, what this you could got? Be interesting. All right. Uh, forests of the night and knaves of scars both sound like edgy YA novels. So. I <laughs> Uh, Fair. Fellowship of Wings. I am stealing that for when we, when I get my friends together, watch Lord of the Rings and eat chicken wings. Uh, a Golden Dancer of the Ringtails. That sounds hot. I would definitely read that. Uh, Prince of Clay is definitely a Batman villain. Sticking that one in there. And, and A Whisper of God is just like a pamphlet that was stuck under my door. It was a chick track, dude. Yeah, yeah. You find those right. in a bathroom at Sheets or something. So, let's see how y'all did. Should we just mark one if we got one? Oh, no, I, I was counting. So, oh, okay. the scores for this, uh, Kem got one right, Gavin got none, no right, Bo got one right, both of you get a point. Yeah! Which one did I get right? Yeah. Uh, you got... Oh, the Fellowship of Ringtails, yeah. let's go! So, uh, Force of the Night is uh, S. Andrew Swan, a sci-fi story about a private eye to investigate a murder. Hmm. Uh, this is, like, one of the only sci-fi stories all of these other ones are fantasy. Wait, the forest one is a sci-fi one? <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. What? Uh, the Prince of Knaves, uh, Alfor Al Alto, that one. Uh, it's a prince who leads a double life and narrowly escapes a lethal conspiracy. God of Clay by Ryan Campbell. Two brothers are caught in a conflict between old gods and must decide where each of their allegiance lies. Uh, a Whisper of Wings by Paul Kidd. It's a darker fantasy chronicling the spiritual crisis of the fictional Kashra, uh, foxes with butterfly wings. Scars of the Golden Dancer. This is by the guest of honor, Night Eyes Dayspring. It's an adult novel where a jackal sex worker must contend with a client's past to find a better life for them both. With apologies to the guest of honor if I am short selling your book. Uh, and <laughs> Fellowship of the Ring Tales by Angela <clears throat> Oliver. Uh, it's an, or an orphan learns about her noble lineage and has to take back the stolen crown of her father, the now dead king. All right, but with that, here are the scores. Yeah. Bo's got two, Gavin's got none so far, and Kem's got one. I want to point board. out that oh. nail biter of a round was a, yeah. a tie for first with one out of six <laughs> between All right. the two of us. Also, we next year, Fellowship of the Wings, that's an event. <laughs> Play the Lord of the Rings movies all day and serve chicken wings. <laughs> all right. But with that, let's move on to a question about Pokemon. Finally, Apparently. something we can guess at. Yeah. The Pokeballs of Pokemon are strange contraptions made from a variety of fruits called apricorns, 
Different Pokeballs are better suited for catching different types of Pokemon. Whether they're fast, aquatic, or just need a little love, a thrown Pokeball, a thrown Pokeball will pop open and turn the Pokemon into energy, storing them safely inside. I buzzed. We buzzed. Did I get the thing? Uh. Uh oh. Okay, hold on. Okay, who buzzed in first? That was me. Okay. All right. I trust you. Uh, I'm gonna say Apricorns are apocryphal. They uh, that was like what they used to be made of, but <laughs> modern Pokeballs are industrial or something. Uh, so. <laughs> I guess technically that's actually right. So it's, it, I think it's adding more information. Like the old Pokeballs did used to be made of Apricorns. Okay. The new Pokeballs doesn't. So yeah. we're going to hold on to that. Okay. And if nobody can get it, then I'll give you a point. All right. Uh, who's the next uh, buzz in? Uh, or was it just Bo? I don't know. I, I buzzed in, so I don't know. You buzzed in? Yeah, I buzzed in. Okay. If we're going down that route, uh, actually, the first Pokeball, the first modern-day Pokeball, mm -hmm. was invented by some guy trying... Oh, I forget the professor's name. But basically, it was invented in the 1920s by some guy who wanted to calm down... A, I think it was a primate? Oh, my God. I'm trying to remember this. This is from like, some Japanese thing. And then he actually <laughs> like the rest of like Pokemon. Rest yeah! Of <laughs> I mean, like, it was from exclusively Japan. Like yeah, Pokemon, that multi-billion dollar franchise. Just some Japanese <laughs> thing. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Okay. Don't worry about it, guys. You're, You're just familiar with the small on top indie of what franchise. Bo said without giving the more. Yeah, you're correct. right. Uh, um, actually, uh, new Pokeballs aren't made of apricorns. They're made of normal industrial materials by the Sylph Company. Well, that's also literally what said. exactly what I said. Okay, yeah. but I'd said it more authoritatively. <laughs> <laughs> I use the word apocryphal. Oh, it's uh, got yes. me on the vocabulary. The mansplaining exception, of course. <laughs> All right. It's Isn't that right. just the game? Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, anyone else want to give it another shot? Actually, oh, uh, actually, I don't think it actually turns them into energy. It just shrinks them, right? That's correct. Ah. Oh, what? See, that's correct. I had to think about that for a second because in the anime, it does kind of show it as like, yeah. But it never does. An actual official art, especially way back when Revolut was new in Japan, mm -hmm. it did a lot of the arts which showed the Pokeballs as see-through and clear, and they just shrunk. Because mm -hmm. they're so, off yeah. of the gacha machines, like the little gacha capsules in Japanese. In, in Pokemon Legends Arceus, or Arceus, as I think Nintendo wants you to say it now, since it doesn't have arse in the name. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> in that game, uh, it's actually revealed that Pokemon just have the natural ability to change size. And Pokeballs exploit this ability to shrink them down so small that they fit in the ball. Oh what? God. Right? <laughs> I, I Weird, can, right? I remember seeing that on That's Twitter, crazy. but that Nintendo. is not what I was thinking. Why? <laughs> I, I, think I, I think I heard that from something else. I don't know if that was The, the last two games made Macro Cannon and then made Micro Cannon. Yeah. It's as, I mean, like, it explains percent. Dynamaxing. Yeah. It doesn't explain yeah. why I can't find a two-foot-eight weasel, though. <laughs> the most frustrating thing. For anyone that's played that game, you know my pain. All right. Let's move on to a question about Scooby-Doo. That's no phantom. That's Mr. Walker. The Scooby-Doo TV shows have shown us that ghouls and ghosts are just someone in a mask. No supernatural creatures here. However, the Scooby-Doo movies are a different story, featuring cyber ghosts, zombies, werewolves, and other supernatural creatures. Let me know if anybody has buzzed in. Uh, oh, I'll buzz, sure. OK. Uh, I'm going to say those three examples are the only ones. There are no other supernatural creatures. You didn't say I'm actually. Damn it! <laughs> um, actually, yeah. those are the only paranormal examples. There are none others. No, there's actually a whole bunch <laughs> of others. <laughs> there's a lot of Scooby-Doo movies. That's oh, fair. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm going to have to remake the room for this. So oh. just throw up a hand if you want to take a stab at this. Oh, did we break it? I think I broke it because I let my phone lock. Furthermore, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. furthermore. <laughs> Your panel has timed out. Please reset it. I reuse the link to okay. get back in. Okay. Let's give it another go. Yeah. In the meantime, anyone else want to take a stab at this? Um, sure. Actually, 
because some of the movies don't feature any of these, and they feature like a weird thing. Isn't there like, maybe like a crossover? They made one with Curse of Calorie Dog. There's a crossover with that. Okay, actually, I guess that count. They made a crossover with WWE for some reason. I don't know why I know this. And then they made like a, oh man. Are you saying WWE isn't supernatural? I yeah. was about to say. I, you know what, yeah. You yeah, you know what? <laughs> oh! I don't know anything about wrestling. Wait, can we go with that? You know, is uh, <laughs> is that why we can tell science. what the so rock that is, is cooking? Just adding more information that is not a correction. <laughs> All right, Bo, did you have one? Yes, I'm gonna say that uh, there there was at least one mainline cartoon Scooby Doo episode where um actually there was actual supernatural stuff in it. That's correct. Yes. What? Uh, there is a there is an old cartoon there's an old series that ran for one season called the 13 ghosts of scooby-doo it features ghosts didn't as you might imagine shows actually have like the because i remember there was a scene i saw where someone was like that actually i think it was one of the newer ones where it literally was just they like, found out that one some of the other stuff in that show were like ghosts and zombies and all that stuff I was going to allow for that, and if anyone confidently said that, I, I was going to say that point. next because I was thinking of it. <laughs> oh, well. All right, uh, let's test the buzzer real quick. Just Buzz. somebody buzzing. Okay. okay, it's working. Cool. All right. Um, actually, it's not working. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> in the beginning of the Netflix adaptation of Beast Stars, <sighs> Tam the Alpaca is killed by an unknown carnivore. Els, a fellow student, is now even more fearful of her fellow carnivorous classmates. When Lagoshia attempts to talk to her, she pulls a knife on him in fear. Bo. It doesn't actually pull Hold on, Bo. Oh, damn it. Oh, did I buzz first? Neat. Oh, wow. Um, okay, this is probably stupid, but um, actually, we do find out who killed him. Uh, you do find out who kills him later, but, okay, but that's not in question yeah, for fine. the moment. Gavin. Um, actually, she doesn't pull a knife out on him. Yes, that's correct. Uh, so in the manga, she pulls a knife. In the Netflix adaptation, she pulls scissors. Well, thank God I did not read the manga. I would have gotten that confused. <laughs> All right, but that brings us to our next shiny question. Oh, dear. So, uh, there's a lot of characters. I really wanted to use the name, whose lion is it anyway, and then ran with it and came up with too many lions. Uh, so now I'm going to ask you to name that lion. Oh, dear. OK. Oh, here we go. <laughs> All right. I'm not ready for this. If you're wondering. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will say. That, that, that happens after yeah. hours, guys. That happens after hours. I will say some of these lions, I did spend a while looking for a good picture. And we'll leave it at that. Man. Excuse me. There are children here. On yeah, I wanted, to see, I wanted to make sure that the lines were clear so you could see all their features. Aha, uh aha, -huh, aha, uh aha. -huh, uh -huh. Oh my. Oh, jeez. Whoa. Oh, oh. Music uh, would be appreciated. Thank you. Oh, you saw that. Sorry to the sound guy. Yep. <laughs> Did not realize this. All right, again, not looking for you to perfectly name everyone because you almost certainly won't. But uh, all you need to do is just name more than your contestants. If you can't name the lion, but you can guess at the work they're from, I'll probably give you half credit. Oh, the stakes have changed. Mm -hmm. yeah. Alternatively, just name them all lion. Name them all lion. <laughs> oh, there's a Pokemon on here. I don't remember what Pokemon it's called. No, I never I remember. <laughs> Uh, 
Can we get the background music again? Thank you. This time I'm not going to let my phone fall asleep so the buzzer continues to work. Okay. I got as much gas as I'm going to get. I actually have a one up. Mm -hmm. I'm confident. Mm -hmm. All right. We good? Yeah. As All right. We're going to be. Let's start with Gavin this time. Gavin. Oh, boy. Uh, from left to right, starting on the top row and going down. Okay, uh, so left to right. All right. Yeah. So that first one's Mufasa. I hope that's Mufasa. If that's actually okay. adult Simba, <laughs> I'm going to feel really dumb. Uh, then it's the Calorie Lion from Wizard of Oz. That's yep. Kimba the White Lion. Yep. I don't know. I have no guess for that line, the blue one. I don't know where he's from. Then it's, isn't that one from Narnia? The, one, the next one. The one under that, I swear he's like, I, I wanted to say Robin Hood, but it's not the king from Robin Hood, because he's actually in here. Uh, which one are, you're going back to the left side, right? Yeah, going back to the left side, I'm on the second row. Mm -hmm. But he, I don't know what he is from. I was just, some Disney line, I don't know what. The one next to him is the line from that like Lion King TV show, I don't know. I'm gonna need the name to give you half credit. Oh, I don't know the name of it. Okay. I think, wait, it's like Lion Guard, I think. I think. It's Lion Guard. Okay. Yeah. I don't know how I knew that. <laughs> then it's Leomon. I think that's what that is. Then the next one is Sora, but he's not actually a lion. He's only a lion in the Lion King world, which is only in Kingdom Hearts 2. It counts. <laughs> I don't know what the lion next to him is. Then there's Lion-O. I think that's Lion-O. Then it's the king from, uh, what is it, R Robin Hood. And next to him, you're going to be excited to find out that that is the lion from Steven Universe. And I have to mention Steven Universe because I swear if I just say lion, I'm going to sound crazy, even though his name is literally just lion, even though he's a pink lion. Yep. Then it's the mayor from Zootopia. I don't actually remember if he had a name. Then it's Pyroar from Pokemon X and Y. Then it is the Mega Man lions from the Mega Man TV show because there's some reason an episode of the Mega Man TV show where they all just turn into lions. I don't know why. I don't know who wrote this. In a, late, in a later animated Mega Man thing, they actually reference this episode as just like a weird fever dream. <laughs> it feels like a, if you watch that episode, it does feel like a weird fever dream. All right, give me the rest of that last row. Oh my God, I don't remember his name. It starts with a K. He's from Lion King 2. He's like... He has like the sex eye at one point. <laughs> Where to God? He like gives like the one. There's like there's like a there's song about their like love, and he gives him like gives her the sex eye. I don't remember his name. It's like Kibo or Ki I don't know. Okay, keep That's going. That's canonical. But, Every Lion King movie has one sex eye. That's, it, that's important. It's right. true. Isn't it also <laughs> canonical that he's a child? Uh, I don't actually. Uh, know. I don't think we should, I don't think we should be describing children as like, having the sex eye. I thought he was he's a girl. I don't actually. I don't know. think he's a child in this. Yeah. yeah. Let's move on to the next one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. Okay. Then it's like Alex Give me the last three. From Madagascar. I don't know what's the one after that. Uh, that last one looks like a fucking fake Amon. That's all I wrote down. Okay. Uh, what was the one from Madagascar? Uh, Alex Lion, right? Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, Bo, what you got? All right. So I have Mufasa. Yep. Cowardly Lion. Yep. Kimba. Yep. Uh, this one I just called Lion, but spelled like in the French way, Lyon. Okay. Uh, the next one is Aslan. Yep. Uh, we've got King Richard. Yep. So you were right. That is from Robin Hood. Oh, That's wow. The real okay. King of Robin Hood. I didn't uh, know. <laughs> this one I know is from the Lion Guard TV show, but I don't know his name. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, we got Leomon, yep. we got Sora. Uh, this guy, I called him MC32 and decided that he's a robot disguised as a lion. Okay. Uh, this one is Lion-O from Thundercats. Yep. We got Prince John. For yep. this one, I wrote the lion from Steven Universe, which I found out is actually correct. Go me. <laughs> no, um, this one it's is- It's lion from it, Steven Universe, oh, not the lion. The lion is wrong. I the lion is wrong. It's a not a title. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I should have known that kind of thing would happen. Yeah. All right, uh, we got Mayor Lionheart from Zootopia. Yep. Uh, I put Solga Leo for this one. Nope. I feel so stupid because that's not right. <laughs> um, this one I called Jeff. You can't prove his name is not Jeff. Uh, this guy is Kovu. I yep. actually remember him. Uh, this is the lion from Madagascar. I yep. put Marty, which I think is the zebra. That's the zebra. <laughs> ah, I'm, I'm so embarrassed. Um, this one I also called Lion. Uh, and this last one I called Neo Lion. Neo Lion. <laughs> Good guesses. Uh, you did pretty well. All right, let's see what you got, Kevin. I feel, I feel kind of dumb now. Uh, I, I wrote Simba for the first one, and you, I think I might be wrong about that. <laughs> see, that's what I was worried about. Yeah. That's why I just went with Mufasa. It's just a, I don't know what about it screamed Mufasa to me. Yeah. It's the red mane. Mm -hmm. Is it really? Red mane. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right, keep going. Okay, so I wrote Simba, and then just the lion. I forgot he was coward. Nope. Lion? Um, Snow White. Nope. <laughs> no. I had no idea about the fourth one there. Yeah. Uh, Aslan. And then King Richard off of a completely random guess. Uh, I don't, I don't know his name, yeah. but I know he's from the King, Li the Lion King animated show, which is uh, something Pride, right? Lion Pride or something like that. No, that's no. Lion King's too. I'm gonna need the name of that show. I don't think it's gonna matter here. It's me. I know he said it like two, like two seconds ago. <laughs> yeah, and I know. No short-term right, memory whatsoever. And then I wrote Jojo Lion because he looks <laughs> Jojo. Jojo. Lion. I've got friends who are gonna yell at me for that. Uh, I, I figured he might have been Sora, but I wasn't sure because I don't play Kingdom Hearts, so I just wrote Kingdom Hearts. Um, and then I don't know his name, but he's from Over the Hedge. I can tell. No. No. He what? <laughs> no. But that's the turtle from Over. Man, this game is rigged. <laughs> And then I did. I uh, I knew he was from Thundercats because he has the sort of omens. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't know who that is. And then uh, I just wrote Steven Universe because I didn't know. <laughs> yeah. I don't watch that. So um, no and then I just wrote the mayor the from Zootopia. Okay. This is the mayor of the Zootopia, lion. right? The I know. I know the the next one is from Pokemon. I didn't. I didn't play that one. Yeah. Uh, the he does look like a Jeff, but I yeah. <laughs> beats me. Uh, I know that. I know the the, the, the next guy's name is that? Kovu. Kovu. Yep. My girlfriend is simping over him all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it's Alex, and I wrote Mufasa, I guess, because it looks like... Oh, it does look like that. That one's Simba. Oh, ah, the live-action version of Simba. <laughs> okay. Oh, my God. Just end me. And then the, the last one, I have no idea. That one is me being a sneaky little man about it. All right, so let's see the names of all of them. So uh, we, you got most of the, you covered Irwin. most of these, way more than I figured. <laughs> All right, so we got Mufasa, Cowardly Lion, Kimba. This is Erwin from The Jungle King. Okay. It's, I it's, can't believe I've I never heard watched of that. that. That is yeah, so too obscure. obscure. It's correct. <laughs> uh, Aslan, King Richard, Kion from The Lion Guard. Kion. Uh, they literally Leolon, just changed one letter. Sora, Samson from The Wild. The reason you didn't hear about this movie is because it came out like immediately after an Ice Age uh, sequel and just kind of got overrun by that, and everyone forgot about it. Uh, Lion-O, Prince John, Lion, Leono Lionheart, if you said Mayor Lionheart, I counted that. Uh, Pyroar, Tar from the Mega Man animated series. Oh my God. Uh, I didn't know if you've seen the like marching lions that are shooting lasers, it's that. <laughs> uh, Kovu, Alex from Madagascar, Simba, and Raikin from Temtem. From what? Temtem. Tem -tem. Really? Is it that Pokemon ripoff? Uh, I mean, I why it like isn't a ripoff if it's better? I mean, that's fair. You got me there. <laughs> Show of hands, who knew that last one? Hey. No one. No one. Absolutely yeah, yeah. no one. <laughs> it looks like a. I was like wondering because it looked like a Fakemon. It does look like a Fakemon. I mean, like a all Temtem -tem kind of look like a Fakemon. I mean, uh, actually, by virtue of being a Pokemon actually like did game. Actually, Damn. buy. Like, there is a Fakemon somebody made for Sun and Moon. And Temtem -tem actually did buy like the rights to have that in their game, right. which I think was actually kind of cool. All right, uh, do a buzzer check just real quick. Sorry. Oh, yeah, I forgot I had this. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my phone fell asleep. I took too long. No, oh, no. Uh, but I checked. I guess the buzzer works. <laughs> that wasn't me. That wasn't the buzzer. Oh, no. All right, hold on. Remaking the room again. Oh, okay. Here we go. Oh, my. 
It's all the fun of well, we're rebooting some, your uh, computer. But okay, guys, check show. out the dealer's den. There's tons of cool stuff. There. Yeah. Go check out that book from that shiny question like four questions ago. If you are over 18. <laughs> <laughs> all right, just reuse the link. Yep. Okay, got Cam, I'm just waiting for Bo and Gavin. Okay. Uh, oh, but the results of that. Uh, Bo got 11. Damn. Seven, eight. Uh, Bo got 11, Gavin got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, oh, damn it. and Kem got 4. This is Woo! counting the half credit ones. Mm -hmm. So that point's going to go to Bo. <laughs> All right, so that brings our scores to Bo at 3, Gavin and Kem both at 1. Let's go. All right. I feel bad about having my phone ring, but my phone is functionally necessary for the game. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. fine. That's why I have my it happens. Okay. Let's see how well you know cons. Hmm. Uh, Anthrocon, likely the most well-known furry convention, transforms Pittsburgh into a city of sweet, fuzzy critters every year. Before it began in 19... Um, actually, they're not sweet at all. <laughs> <laughs> they're just uh, awful. Are awful. awful. Just awful. Uh, That's a matter of opinion. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, before it began in 1997, uh, most furry meetups happened during sci-fi and other fandom conventions. Anthrocon was the first standalone furry convention. Originally, um, based actually, that's incorrect. The first furry, uh, furry convention was. Um, oh, it just slipped out of my mind. It was Conference Zero. That's entirely correct. Wow. Wow. Shout out to that's Mark Merlino incredible. for ruining my childhood. Uh, confer <laughs> so yeah, Anthrocon was probably most well known, but like it wasn't the first. Conference Zero uh, started almost a decade earlier in 1989 starting at 65 attendees, eventually capping out to 1250 in 1998, and then shutting down five years later. Um, this is, Califer actually came out of conference shutting down. Oh. So there's some con history for you. Mm -hmm. All right. With the release of Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition, Dragonborn remained the only available Anthro character option in the player's handbook since their first appearance in 4th Edition. While the campaign books included additional options like the Arakakra in the Elemental Evil Player's Companion, the largest edition was released in the Monster Manual. It included playable options like Cobalt, Lizard Folk, Kenku, Tabaxi, and even Yuan Ti. Kem. Um, actually, Dragonborn first appeared in second edition. I don't think that's correct. <sighs> Shot in the dark. <laughs> I'll have to look it up. <laughs> now, before that, a lot of people just played as half dragons, but then you have to deal with like level adjustments and stuff like that. In fourth it, edition, it, they it, realized listen, people listen, just want to play as dragons and dragons. If it plays to Bahamut or Tiamat, it counts. Yeah, it's people just want to play as dragons in the game called Dungeons and Dragons, so they just made it an option. Mm -hmm. You'd be surprised. <laughs> Anyone else? Bo. Um, actually, Tabaxi are in the base rule set. No. They are not in the base rule set. Okay. Ken. Um, actually, Tabaxi and Yuanti are not in the monster manual. They're in um, Xanathar's guide. I'm, I'm going to give you the point unless somebody can tell me the name of the book. It is not Xanathar's. I'm giving you the point. <laughs> uh, they are in Volo's Guide to Monsters. Oh, in addition Volos. to uh, Tabaxi and Yanti, all of those that I listed are all in Volo's. Monster Manual had no playable character options. Hmm. All right. And now we go to a question about the Ursa Majors. The largest furry-centric award body, the Ursa Majors, began in 2001. The awards rotated through various conventions annually up until 2020 for hopefully obvious reasons. Um, <laughs> There were several mainstays of the awards, uh, including author Kyle Gold, who has won 13 awards in novel, short fiction, and other literary works. Also, Rick Griffin, the creator of House Pets, who won best comic strip since 2009. Yes, uh, um, Bo. Um, actually, there was a year where uh, Carry On won best comic strip. Entirely correct. Ah, I know yeah. that one because I also won an Ursa Major that year. <laughs> I was so wait a minute. That's there. a conflict of interest. <laughs> yeah. What'd you win the Ursa Major for? I won the Ursa Major for a uh, 
fan fiction of Carry On. So Carry On oh. was twice that year. Uh, oh, nice. Was best Can we get a round of applause for our winner here? <laughs> Thanks, guys. Uh, yeah, I wrote. Fantastic. Uh, I wrote Yuri's bittersweet story, which is set in the Carry On universe, and That's later sweet. Kathy Gr Kathy Garrison uh, made that part of the comic, so it's canon it's canonical now, which is like just as good as an when award. Your fan okay. Comes Question for back of house: How tight's our timeline? Is it all right if I run like five, ten minutes over? You're cool. Cool. All right. Then that's going to bring us to our next shiny question that I'm not going to skip. <laughs> so. You will need the whiteboards and a marker for this. Did I get a point for that one? Uh, you did. Okay. You're at four now. Yes. Wait, what is the scoreboard right now? Yeah, what is the scoreboard? Oh, so the scoreboard, okay. going into this last shiny question, Bo is at four, Gavin's Wait, at one. Why do I have one? I got, I got the Beastars question right. You're right. <laughs> I was going to say. Um, actually, he, uh, he has two points. <laughs> <laughs> you don't get a point for that. <laughs> oh, dear. All right. So Bo is at four, Gavin's at two, and Kem is at three. I'm coming for you, Bo. Competitive. Yeah, yeah. All right. So, uh, what? So, you know, there's a bunch of fictional creatures. Uh, so I want you to draw me a manticore. <sighs> okay, okay. Oh, Artistic no. talent does not count here. I'm just looking for several key features of the creature. This was in an episode of My Little Pony. I should know this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, don't, I have no idea what the hell this thing um, is. There, there's a couple of popular versions, so like, I'm, if you get one of the variants, I'm going to count it. And if you can get most of the features correct and make a strong enough argument, I, I'll give you the point. Can I just write down the features? Because I cannot draw to save my life. <laughs> you have to draw have to at make, least a little bit, make but it you can attempt. label them. Oh, okay. <laughs> this, this is going to be like bare bones. I'm oh, I can't draw either. That's why I <laughs> added this question, because it's funny to me. It's the wonderful thing about being a furry. If you can't draw, you can pay someone to draw for you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's magic, man. That could, that could be our street shout out. You commission an artist to do your manticore for yeah. you. One more time for background music, please. Can I get another marker? This thing is dull. Thank you. Sorry, I checked one of those markers and like, oh, these are good. These will work fine. I did not yeah, check the I other two. I generally don't know what they look like. <laughs> I'm going to guess. I'm spending way too long on the pause. That's telling about me. Hey, <laughs> there are children. <laughs> I just want to make sure it's detailed. Mm -hmm. I'm joking, the pause attorney. Actually, wait, what's going on? He's not joking. Do. Shiny questions, also known as that time where I can repair my vocal cords. Do you want this back? Uh, I got another one. Okay, cool. Do we have a way to put these on the big board? Can we like? Uh, on them? How good's the camera zoom? Uh, okay, we can so run over to the camera. I don't know. The camera's like all the way over Wait, there. Wait, we can run it over with what? Legs. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so, uh, looks like everyone's done. So let's see how we did. Uh, we're gonna start with Bo this time. All right, so got my manticore. Which, way, which direction am I facing? I, this I believe your camera is over there, green light. Ah, okay, it's this guy. Yeah, yeah. All right, so we got like lion, lion head, lion body. Um, there is uh, the tail of a scorpion coming out of the back of it. And just like randomly in the middle of its shoulder blades is a goat head for some reason. Okay. Uh, Cam, let's see how you did. Uh, where's my camera? It's the, it should be the green one, or that one that's leg yeah, yeah. is now red, so now I'm questioning it. Oh, okay. it's over there. Okay, yeah, cool. Yeah. So, literally bare bones. I don't know if anyone can <laughs> You know can what? See sure. That. The most bare bones. So, it's a lion, it's a lion body with a lion head, and it's got horns on the head, it's got bat wings, and a scorpion's tail. Okay. Please, uh, butter shy, save me. Gavin, <laughs> how'd you do? I have no idea what this thing is. <laughs> I kind of like, I kind of guesstimated it. So right. I, I gave it like a wow, that's pretty good. Like a lion. I gave it like, I, I don't know. I just admit, oh, I'm not looking. I'm looking at the TV. So like, so I gave it like little, like, you know, like, like a horse tail. I gave it like hooves. 
I got multiple horns. I don't. I don't know what this was supposed to look like. Hmm. I was trying to get this without glare. Commission okay. start. Yes, yeah, it's definitely the most artistically <laughs> superior entry. Oh, you can God. find them in the dealer's den. All right. Hmm. <laughs> okay. So let's see what a Manticore looks like. There are two different versions. There's the D&D &D version, and then there's the more classical version that I just grabbed from the Harry Potter wiki because it was the clearest picture. So what we're looking for here is we're looking for a humanist head, the body of a lion, and then either wings of a dragon, bats close enough, or tail of a scorpion or dragon. So Bo and Kem did pretty well. I'm just going to give you both a point. No. Sorry, Gavin. Is there a different one with the goat head sticking out of it? Am I thinking? Uh, chimera. Uh, chimera. Yeah, that's what I was thinking chimera. at first, yeah, yeah. too. Yeah. Gavin, I'll give you a half point because you did draw really well. <laughs> <laughs> I drew a what? Because you, you, your drawing looks good. <laughs> All right. So we got. Does it? Uh, okay. So our last question. <clears throat> Right now, I'm if coming you, for you, Bo. If you've yeah, seen yeah. the show, our last question, as always, concerns real life real skills. Life skills. Oh, dear. All right. We're furries. So, this is the worst part. <laughs> uh, I did the thing again. Buzzer check. Oh. Uh, buzz. 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 All right. Just hold up your hands when you have an answer. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. As part of a trick real to life expose buzzing. bellwether schemes, Zootopia's Nick Wilde is shot by a blueberry instead of a toxic chemical pellet. Blueberries, along with raspberries, grapes, or sliced apples, can be great um, treats. Actually, uh, the chemical that uh, is used by Bellwether is not toxic. It just causes you to go feral and crazy. I'm going to argue that's still toxic. Ah. Yeah. Oh, actually, grapes are very toxic to dogs. That's correct. Uh, grapes are so... So this is not like, oh, my dog got into a whole bag of chocolate. I need to run it to the vet. This is, if your dog gets a hold of a grape, you better be a vet and have equipment on hand. It's so toxic to dogs that it can cause immediate kidney failure. Okay, uh, that I actually did know. I didn't know about the kidney failure. Yeah. So uh, additionally bad, uh, cherries are bad. Uh, they contain a little bit of cyanide, and uh, avocados and tomatoes are also another thing that dogs can't eat. So if you learned anything from this, do not give a dog grapes. But yeah. Great flavored Fanta, though, totally okay. Yeah, yeah, it's fun. All right, so that point went to Gavin. So that's the end of our show. Uh, we have the final total of Bo at five, Gavin at three and a half, and Kem at four, making Bo our winner today. <laughs> yeah, so once again, I've been your host, Ralts Kumar. Uh, Rowan uh, at Antlerbun on Twitter. Please give them a follow. Uh, handled all the graphic design. You do not want to see what this looked like before they got a hold of it. <laughs> it was bad. I was just using the Google Drive's clip art. <laughs> um, and once again, this is a fan-made, unofficial furry version of College Humor's I'm Actually and is no way affiliated with College Humor. That's all. Have a great con. Hi, Mom! <laughs> I don't know which camera's on. <laughs>